Okay, now on to part two where I'm going to get straight into the painting and go ahead and start mixing the blue for my background. Now, the blue I use, um, I kind of already had mixed up in the palette, so I've just gone and used that again. The great thing about watercolours is, well, especially if you've got a set like mine, you can reuse paints. They will remelt if you just add some water, okay? Um, but to help me get the correct colour, what I do is actually hold up the photograph. Here we go, next to the colour that I've mixed, just to try and help me match up and get the correct version of that blue that I need. So throughout the painting process, I will usually have two brushes, one to apply paint with and one to manipulate water with. Now, as you can see here, all I'm doing is painting in the surface area of my drawing where the background is going to sit but I'm not using paint I'm using water okay this technique is known as wet on wet and it's very traditional for watercolor artists to work this way I'm basically dampening the page before I apply the paint this is going to help us to manipulate the paint pigment around on the on the paper surface itself it's going to help it stay wet for longer so it doesn't instantly dry and become patchy um, so use this technique especially if you're doing washes of color in a large flat area so wet on wet okay as you can see there the pigment just wants to bleed off and find its way across the paper that's because I've wet it it will stay out of the dry zones where we don't want it to go so with the paintbrush now I've applied that nice pale blue and then in a few seconds I'm gonna switch back to that dry brush or the damp brush and use that to actually manipulate the paper um, the paint pigments around you can control the paint while it's on the page um, it's quite difficult it's a hard skill to master but once you give it a shot you understand what I'm saying you can move the paint around uh, so long as you keep the paper wet here we go so I'm using this damp brush there's nothing on this brush it's just slightly damp and I'm using that to push and maneuver and direct all those high quality paint pigments where I want them to be so pay attention to how I'm actually holding the brush I'm holding it very delicately and almost like it's a pencil and I'm using the very tip of the brush to maneuver and push the fine paint pigment around on the paper already. Remember, this brush has no paint on it, just water. So I'm actually just using it as a tool to push and move the paint to where I need it in relation to the photograph I'm working from. And that's the same technique that I use for the entire background. Just dampen the surface first, then apply some paint with the paint brush, and then switch out to the, the damp brush to push and move the paint to where I want it. Now you can see here that this blue is a slightly darker shade of blue than the previous one. So to achieve that, all I've done is add a touch of red to that blue so when you add a contrasting color to the color that you're using so if you think about color wheel and the opposite of blue is red slash orange if you add a touch of that to the blue that you're working with it will make it darker we don't use black we add the contrasting colors because they cancel each other out and become a more muted darker version of its original self so just remember that if you want to make a darker sh uh, shade or a tone or something you add a touch of the opposite color okay and then that will give us that darker tone and just like the original outline drawing I'm going around the painting one square at a time just filling in those areas of color using that wet on wet technique and switching the brushes when I need to not overdoing it because the watercolors will dry pretty quickly and if you want a, a more vibrant color just give it a minute or so to dry and then add an extra layer so that's the good thing about watercolors 
uh, you can layer them up and it will build up a more uh, vivid more vibrant um, version of that color and one other thing to remember is if you can see near my uh, water pot there I've actually got some newspaper underneath now sometimes I like to use a sponge sometimes I like to use a rag it doesn't really matter but um, that's for getting the excess water off so you don't want to have too much water on your brush at once because you'll just end up with puddles on your page and it will start to buckle the paper okay so make sure that when we go back to the water pot to get some more water on our brush that we just give it a little dab on some newspaper or even on the back of your hand that works too just get rid of that excess and then you can go around as you can see here I've added an extra layer of blue just to give it a bit more life a bit more of a punch and uh, that's the background almost finished so I'll see you in part three where we're gonna start by painting the lily itself <laughs> 